some back burning going on nearby. Tell you what, how about an impromptu Mike the Scientist video? So, who knows what the serotonin process is? I'm going to go ahead and assume that many of my Australian viewers have heard of it, but they don't know it by name. So, serotonin or serotonin is the process by which plants allow their seeds to germinate in their death by fire. So the plants themselves will die as a result of bushfire, but it's only under those circumstances that they'll release their seeds. Now backburning is done in part to promote this new growth, but also to help um, control the areas and remove all unnecessary fuel for fire, because fire is a very devastating aspect of life in Australia. So you know what guys, I'm going to take you to a little reserve nearby and I'll see if we can find any examples. Now this area has been backburned twice in my lifetime. The last was about three years ago and just looking at it you can't tell. Now the main reason you can't tell that it's been backburned so recently is because stuff like native grass and much of our native trees grow back so rapidly. Now, during times of fire, and particularly backburning, what the aim is, is to get rid of all of this you see down here. Potential fuel for a fire. So dead leaves, dead grass, dead branches that have fallen down just here. Because all of this poses a significant threat to the surrounding area if it's allowed, if it, it's allowed to burn uncontrolled. There is a spider's web right in front of me. I'm not going to walk through that. Fuck, I nearly didn't see it. So backburning is something that the native population, the indigenous Australians, have been doing for a very long time. Long before the white man arrived. Now there were many reasons for this. First and foremost, to control wildfires. Because they can be quite devastating. You mention bushfires to any Australian, I guarantee your chill runs down their spine. Especially in the wake of the Black Saturday fires, which happened in 2009. 173 people dead. Over 10,000 buildings and homes destroyed. And I believe 83 towns were just wiped off the map. Now, as difficult as it is to live with fire and the threat of bushfires, Unfortunately, it is a necessary and natural part of the Australian ecosystem. Why is that? Well, first of all, fires have always been a very natural part of our ecosystem. There's nothing we can do about it. It's going to happen. The best thing we can do is backburn to help control it. But we are always going to have bushfires, and there will always be instances where they get out of control. It's happened many times before, and it's going to keep on happening. So, why is it necessary? Plant life in Australia has evolved to live with fire, because it's just such a common thing. Plants need to be able to reproduce and germinate their seeds. Now, you would think that fire would fuck this whole process up, but in fact, many of our plant life Many of our trees, our fauna, has adapted to live with it. Not so much live with it, I should say, as when they die in it, it allows the next generation and their offspring to grow. These are called serotonous plants. So what they'll do when there's a fire, they have these sort of pine cone-like structures that hold their seeds. And these are almost literally glued shut with a hard resin that will only open under extreme heat. And the reason it does this is because after a fire, the ground is fertile. Ash, like ash from fires, is not as dead as you think it is. It's full of nutrients. And it provides the ground, oh, what's this? 
Got a little burrow there. Might be a rabbit or something living in there. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force them out. Anyway, back on the topic. So they require fire to germinate because fire wipes out most of the competition. Because while a lot of plants are serotonous, many of them aren't. So this allow this gives the new the new seeds, the new saplings, one hell of an advantage right after a fire because they can immediately sprout back. And since it only takes them two years on average to grow to adult size, it's really really one hell of an advantage to have because it will take roughly two years for the rest of the plants to even recover. But these trees will even go to the point of encouraging a fire by letting their bark shed, let it, letting it hit the ground and creating more fuel. And this is all so that they can reproduce and give their seeds a bit of, bit of a head start. And it kind of reminds me of the phoenix. Now in this case it's not a tree that's being reborn, it's just giving birth to, to offspring. But it's making an ultimate sacrifice because it cannot germinate these seeds without first allowing itself to die. Here we go, here's some evidence of a burnt one. So this is a tree that survived. You can tell that it's been torched pretty ferociously and it's managed to grow back in some areas that we've got a lot of charred bark all down here. So this is one that would have survived the, um, the back burning process not so long ago. But all of this, everything here is fresh. It's all less than three years old because this area was completely desolate after our last back burn. Only the tallest trees tend to survive those. We've got another one over there that's torched. So yeah guys, as painful as it is to accept, fires are a very natural part of the Australian landscape. And it's a very ne necessary part of keeping our bushland germinating, keeping it in what we would consider a reasonably healthy condition. It's just, it's an amazing evolutionary adaptation. Absolutely incredible. Oh, g'day, lorikeets. How you doing, mate? Look at that. It's a rainbow colored bird. They're not, they're not threatened by me. Yeah, g'day, how you doing, mate? So guys, I hope you've learned something today. Heading on back to the bike now. If you enjoy these sort of sciencey videos, let me know. Let me know. Just chuck us a like, a subscribe if you feel I deserve it. It's been a little while since I did another one in the Mike the Scientist series. Anyway, have a fantastic day, everyone, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.